Hey, everybody. Welcome to Farming for Success. I'm Seth. I'm a consultant at Data, so I support our business development team, and I'm here with Laura. Laura is our COO, so she oversees all business operations here. And today, we're going to be talking about marketing to your existing and past customers to maximize profit from those who are most likely to buy from you. All right. So most of us have this picture in our minds when we think about marketing. Okay. And it seems like the vast majority of time when I talk to people about it, their mind immediately jumps to new business, right? How can I get the word out about my organization to a targeted audience? Or maybe it's how can I generate new leads? And as, as a B2B marketing guy, like that's great, but it's painful at the same time because for most businesses, that's only a piece of the puzzle, right? And a lot of salespeople are familiar with this language, hunting, one after new business and farming, growing existing relationships. And, and for most of you, there's a ton of potential for growth within your existing customer base, and it's up to you to find it. It also just makes sense, right? It's good marketing. Marketing to your existing customers is a low waste, right? You're working with a defined list of people who already know you, so it's efficient, right? It generally costs a lot less than hunting strategies. And for those of you that heavily rely on referrals, you already know that your existing customers can be your strongest sales and marketing muscle, and your farming muscle needs to support that. So no matter you know where you do your research on, on the topic, you're going to find the same story. Uh, I pulled mine from Textedly and Invest, but in general, the businesses focus a lot more on acquisition than existing customer growth, while the highest conversion potential lies within the existing customer base. So I've seen, I think I've seen the same story written at least three different times in Harvard Business Review. It's depending on which of the studies you believe or what industry you're in, acquiring new customers anywhere from 5 to 25% more expensive than retaining an existing one. So having a client growth and retention strategy matters. So I, I've been thinking about this. Everybody I ever talked about this agrees that there's a ton of value in growing existing customers and it's less expensive than finding new ones, but businesses still neglect it. Why is that? So from what I've seen, it's because it takes collaboration and that's hard for a lot of businesses. And you often have multiple hands on each account or there isn't clarity over who's responsible for what. Account managers might not be salespeople. Maybe departments operate in silos. And oftentimes businesses just haven't put the focus and attention into organizing a plan to do it well. So that's what we're going to talk about today. Awesome. Collaboration from Seth, the sales guy. That's awesome to hear because it's not an easy thing to solve. So today we're going to go out through the farming strategy. I'll hit it high level here and then we'll go into details. So the first thing you really need to do is you have to build your list. Next, after that, you're going to figure out the story that you're going to tell to your customers. And then you need to pick out the channels and the tactics that make sense for your customer base. And of course, you can't forget about your budget. Finally, you need to measure, analyze, and iterate based on what you've learned. So the first thing you need for any farming or marketing strategy, like I mentioned, is your list. It sounds super simple, but if you don't have a list, you're stuck before you even start. If you have a CRM that actually gets used, you should have what you need there. And there's usually an easy way to export the contacts if you need to export them. But if you don't have a CRM, you should probably get one of those yesterday if you don't have a CRM. <laughs> I'm always afraid to even say that in front of a salesperson. If you don't have a CRM, you should get one yesterday. But in the meantime, we do work with people who don't have CRMs and really just marketing and sales or your account management need to collaborate here too and gather up a spreadsheet. And that can include simple things like the business name, the contact name, email, physical address, phone number. And really, if you have that handful of things, you can run just about any strategy. I'll sometimes talk to businesses too that want to get super granular with their list and they want to split it up by geography, by service line, product. And don't get me wrong, there's a lot of good that can come from filtering your list like that. But sometimes it can get in the way of actually taking action. So most of the time, it doesn't even really make sense to cut up a list into that small of buckets. But if you want to segment your list at that granular level, you might want to consider doing some kind of hierarchy where you can have larger groups that can be broken out into subsets. But whatever your list ends up being, make sure it's in line with sales. You both need to be on the same page when it comes to your target. One thing that's always good too is to go through that list and consider which customers do you need to prioritize? What customers would you consider your VIPs 
especially when you get into the sales and marketing collaboration, those are the ones that should receive the most attention. That's, that's right, Ops, no drop on the VIP sales. <laughs> Hey, we'll get into channels and tactics in a minute, but first I want to step back and just think about the story we want to tell our customers. So what, what do you want them to know about you? You know, I mean, what would be interesting for them and what might open up new sales opportunities for you? Is it general engagement with the objective of retention and relationship building, or is it promotional in nature with the objective of cross-selling and upselling? When we talk about marketing to existing customers, I often see clients hit this wall when they're trying to come up with what to say. So we have some ideas for you. Here are some uh, ideas that we've seen work for other clients of ours in the past. The first one is industry insight. And I like this one. You know, you want to be seen as a leader in your industry. Customers probably see value in your expertise. So show it off, right? What's new in the industry? What are you seeing? Is there new technology? Maybe there's new regulations that a lot of people don't know about. There's probably a lot of things that you know about your industry that your customers don't. So here's an opportunity to share that. Another one, customers that buy from you often care about what you have going on especially in the B2B world where you have a close sales customer relationship. If you're working on an expansion project, talk about it. If you have an employee that did something good in the community, go ahead and share it. People are drawn to these types of stories and it naturally leads to pretty high engagement. Another one I like is a customer spotlight because you can win on a couple different fronts here. If you spotlight one of your great customers, it gives them exposure, right? Which they're going to appreciate. And it often leads to, it often leads to really interesting content for your other customers. And ideally, it gives them new ideas for how you could help them. Another one is a product or service showcase. This is a big question. Do all of your customers know about every product or service you offer? In a perfect world, yes, but oftentimes the answer is no. So marketing to your existing customers gives you the opportunity to show off some of, maybe some of the, the lesser known products and services that you offer, and that can open the door to big cross-selling opportunities. Another one is case studies. So I know you all have, have made or done some pretty cool stuff. And I know you all have great success stories to share. So put them out there. Don't forget to ask your ops and account management people for some success stories too. They're the ones that have the real stories. And then finally, your customers are worth more than the revenue they generate directly. I alluded to this earlier. I'm going to say it again. Your customers are worth more than the revenue they generate directly. Referrals are gold. Okay. And advocacy makes a difference. So this is an opportunity to, to share, maybe it's, a, maybe it's a referral incentive or it's just ask for a referral. Sometimes people just need to be asked to give you a referral. Another thing you do is ask for a testimonial or an online review, just all around a really good spot for an advocacy ask. So now Laura has an example. Awesome. So yeah, Seth went through why messaging is important, but once you have your message crafted, it's really time to think about dispersing your story across multiple channels. I'll get into those specific channels and some tactics next, but here's a couple of visual examples of taking a baseline story and really developing an omni-channel strategy. So this is a customer of ours, Spectrum Aeromed. And in this case, the story is about an isolation chamber that is used to transport COVID-19 patients during the pandemic. In this particular strategy, we included press releases, we had paid advertisements on several platforms, on-site content for SEO, print media and publications. We also did trade show and sales collateral, which was not only for lead generation, but also for educating existing and past customers with their innovative solutions. And conveniently, this particular solution could be used and easily paired um, with this customer's own air medical equipment. So it was really important to get in front of their existing customers with this um, option on how to um, optimize their aircraft during those tough times. Um, so now let's go back to tactics. You have your list. You have a really great story that you want to tell. Now, what are you actually going to do to get in front of your customers? So here's where the lines get blurry between sales and marketing. And that's why we'll really echo again here. It needs to be a collaborative effort. You need to decide on your end who's going to be responsible for what. You can throw these ideas around, but if you don't know who's taking action on them, and of course, I'm a list person and want to check it off the list on the things that I've done. But even when Seth, when the sales team is responsible for something, they appreciate that. Everybody wants to know what their part is. Hey, um, we got to work together. We got to work together on this to make it work. 
Yes, absolutely. So we'll start with events and trade shows. This is an example of a gray area. So we know it's beneficial to get out and do some real face-to-face -face networking. You want to pick the trade shows that your customers are attending. You set up a booth, you walk the floor. Beyond that, it's also really important to understand the goal of the show. If you want to collect emails or if you want to send emails through a specific marketing path, you really want to all know the plan and collaborate with marketing on all the details all the way down to tracking. And I really emphasize marketing because we talk a lot about collaboration here with sales and account management and the teams, but make sure marketing is a huge part of this too. If you do split out sales and account management teams in your organization, it really makes sense to have the sales and account managers at the show sometimes together. Shows are typically approached from what we see from a lead gen perspective, but a lot of account growth happens at shows too. Like Seth mentioned before, your customers, we wish they did, but they don't know everything about you and your products and your services. So a show is a great time to get back in front of customers or prior customers. Client appreciation. Now, this one is highly effective, but it gets missed a lot because it's super hard to systemize. Your customers, they're the reason you're in business. You want to tell them how much that means to you. We use a service at data that's in this example here called Thanks. This is a super easy way to send customers or employees thanks and gifts online. So you can send coffee, lunch, gift cards, all kinds of really fun stuff. The main thing here for us is it's easy. So it's always appreciated. We do think about our customers often, and it just makes it super easy to take that extra step and show them how appreciative you are of their business and partnership. Account management. So what do the direct touch points look like from sales and account managers? Is it a monthly check-in? Is it a two-week follow-up after a sale? Is it more sporadic when you're, you're just doing outbound calls when you want to sell something? And although these seem like really minor details and take it from a details person, it's super important so you can know what you're doing now and really the best way to stay close to your existing customers and provide value. You're not going to know what's working if you don't have it jotted down and understand all the details. And of course, the ownership, we can't emphasize enough in setting standards for the touch points. On the marketing side of things now, and I'll say marketing, but we're not completely out of the gray area with any of these, but typically these are the things that fall under the marketing hat. So email, this could be an email newsletter or maybe an offer. It's typically low budget. It's direct. It's effective. Social media, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, whatever platforms that make sense for you, your existing followers. And, the, and your customers are going to be the people most likely to see that content. So what you can do is create posts and that are super relevant to them, but you can also create a boost and uh, target your existing followers. You can even create an audience match list of your current and past customers and platforms and then boost to that audience too, which is pretty effective. Direct mail. So we're working with a finite list. Why not Take every angle available, put something in the mail, send out a quarterly newsletter, or even just a holiday card. Um, getting in front of your customers any which way is important. Blog and content marketing. So this is a really great place to show off your expertise, share some industry updates. You can share those case studies that Seth was talking about before in a blog on your website. And then you can use some of these other channels here like email or social media to really get it out. Retargeting. This is also great. It's low budget. Get in front of your current or past customers who are often the people who are visiting your website and retarget them with ads that could be in browser or on social media. So now we went through a lot of the tactics here. Seth is going to share with you an example. Yeah. So I got an example here. It's a client of ours, Jaybird. This is a curveball too. And they put a heavy emphasis on their employer brand. So if you go out on social media and you look at their content, it's almost all about this, like the bird life on how, how great life is working for Jaybird. And this wasn't like a post pandemic workforce shortage panic for Jaybird. They had been doing this for years, but here's the thing. People want to do business with good employers. Okay. The content gets a ton of engagement. If you look at this like over 170 plus, but guess who's seeing it. Okay. Sure. Like sure. Employees and candidates see it and that's great, but who else has seen it? It's the people who know Jaybird. 
So think existing customers, past customers, maybe even like referral partners and, and probably prospects too. So I love to see a good employer brand promotion mixed in with a farming strategy. It's one of those things that I think just makes a ton of sense. Yeah. So once you've got your plan and you're into execution, the next step, and it's an important one, is to measure. Um, you, you, you need to know what's working and what needs to be adjusted in order to be effective. So what's actually turning results for you? Marketing can get expensive. So if you don't feel like wasting a bunch of money, y'all don't feel like wasting a bunch of money. If you don't want, to, don't want to waste a bunch of money, you need to know what's working and what isn't, and then you need to act, okay? So what you're going to want to look for are trends, okay? Maybe you find that in an email newsletter with a customer spotlight brought in a bunch of website traffic, or maybe it was a, a, a social media post about a new product, got a bunch of engagement. Even just in those two examples, there's a lot of variables, okay? Was it the channel or was it the content? Was it... Like the copy or was it the photos? So don't be afraid to, to A-B test, narrow in on what's working, replicate, and maybe the most important part, deprioritize what isn't working. Okay. So what are we measuring? It's kind of hard. And, and as, as much as I'd like to say everything should be able to be tied back to ROI, that's just not how it works in most cases. Okay. Especially with existing customers and even more so in B2B. So what we have to look for are indicators. Uh, so what are these indicators? A couple of good ones here. Engagement. Uh, this is one, this one's kind of specific to social media. Are people interacting with the content that you're putting out there? Uh, another one specific to email, the open rate. Do people care enough about the topic at hand to read more? Another one might be website traffic. Did you put out a piece of content through multiple channels that, that made people go to the website, maybe spend time there? Another one's conversions. Uh, are people picking up the phone? Are people sending you a message as a direct result of a call to action that you put out in your messaging. And finally, we've got sales. Did you see a material spike in sales as, as a result of something you were promoting through your marketing? Now, there's definitely more indicators out there, but these are the ones we see come up a lot. Okay, so take a look at your indicators as a whole and get a sense of the real picture of what's working. And, and that's not always easy to do because you're trying to synthesize a picture by looking at a bunch of shadows. So... I'm mean, actually here, the example on screen here is uh, uh, Daylight. We have a, a software called Daylight that does a really nice job of layering all those shadows on top of each other that gives you a pretty clear picture into what's going on. And finally, when your measurements show trends, you have to act. Don't just sit on the information. Adjust your messaging. Change your platforms. Move around your audience segments based on what's working. And again, deprioritize what isn't. Yeah, we wish it would all work, but it's not going to. And this is probably the most common thing that is missed when we're working on these strategies with our customers is really doing that review and making adjustments. For sure. So stepping back again here and, and looking at how to build a farming strategy, we've broken it out into, into four steps. One, build the list. As you look down at the other three steps, or you can't do anything until you have the list. So build the list first. Two, figure out the messaging. Number three, determine your channels and tactics. And then finally, measure what's working, what isn't, and then act accordingly. So on the short session here, we talked a lot about how to build and how to execute. But if you actually want to get this done, it takes commitment. Okay, Existing account growth should be part of your plan and your goals. Responsibility should be defined and there has to be accountability behind it. If you need guidance or if you don't know if you and your team can maintain accountability on your own, that's one area of data can help. So, hey, thanks everyone for joining us. I hope you all came away with some really good, actionable you know, next steps. If you want to learn more about building a farming strategy for your business, this is stuff we do every single day with our clients as a fractional marketing partner. So we'd love the opportunity to talk to you.